Welcome to an Insomniac Party. This is Hawkeye to go and solo this time. No one else is in this. Let's play. Because, quite frankly, I think this is a game that only I and the Insomniac Party really care about, but then again, I haven't really asked, so... <laughs> it would be kind of funny if after I upload this, someone else, like, leaves a comment from the Insomniac Party saying, Dude, this game was awesome! <laughs> so, this is Jazz Jackrabbit 2, and I'm pretty sure that people will see this are going to fall into two categories. They would be like, oh, hell yeah, I've been playing that when I was younger, that was a shit. Or you're just going to be like, wow, this looks like a really uninspired Sonic the Hedgehog knockoff. I am in the former. I remember that, for whatever reason, back in middle school, all of the computers had Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 installed on it. We don't know where it came from. My guess is that, like, some nerdy kid from previous years just installed it on there so that everyone could have fun. And yeah, we all had fun with this game. It has great multiplayer. There's a ton of options for different multiplayer games you can do. You can do races, capture the flag, co-op, and so on. And it was awesome. And I just remember always thinking it was such a great game. And I never owned it. I only ever played it there. Until recently. And I got it again. And I was like, oh man, I can't wait to play this game again. It's going to be so good. Does it live up to my nostalgia? Mostly. It's not as good as I remember, I'd be honest, but like what is good is really good. So it's an interesting game and there's a lot to talk about, so I will continue on. Now, there are four major chapters in this game. It's done in the whole Doom style that you see, you know, commonly from early PC games like this, so... You start out at Formerly a Prince and go through all of them. Homecooked levels is for custom levels, and Shareware Demo are three exclusive levels that were included in the Shareware Demo. They so still use the same assets from the other episodes, so that's nothing new graphically, but we might play for it at the end. Anyway, let's get started. The other thing about this game, you have two playable characters, Jazz Jackrabbit and Spaz Jackrabbit. They are mostly the same, with few different abilities. Jazz, for example, he can hover and has a high jump. Um, Spaz cannot do either of those, but he can double jump, and he can do a karate kick. I'm gonna start with Jazz, and I'll probably just alternate between the two for each episode, so I'll be episode 1, Jazz, episode 2, Spaz, so on and so forth. Um, okay, easy, medium, and hard. I seriously don't even really notice the difference, I just always play on hard. So, this is Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. Um, first thing to note, controls. So, if you hold down the shift button, you can run, and you're probably going to run into things a lot if you're new to the game, so use it sparingly. This is your normal walking speed, which is pretty decent. You have a gun. You can shoot, you can shoot up, and you also have jump, hover, as well as this little um, ground pound attack. Now, holding down and the jump button will do something different for each character, as I mentioned before. This is the high jump that Jeff has, whereas Baz has the karate kick. Okay. Turtles, you can shoot them once. They get knocked over like this, once they do that, they're harmless, but if you want more points and just want to be a murderous bastard, you can go ahead and use the down, um, butt stomp attack again. It's called butt stomp, even though you don't really seem to do any butt stomping, so, frick of I know. So, I think this game, there aren't that many really good PC-exclusive platformers, especially back in this era. And, like, there are a few that are decent, like, you know, Commander Keen and the original Duke Nukem have their fans. But it's kind of hard to, like, say, oh yeah, this lives up to something like Yoshi's Island, or even Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So, actually, did Sonic 3 and Knuckles get a port? I'm pretty sure that um, Sonic CD got a port to PC. But it wasn't exclusive anyway. So, the first Jazz Jack Rabbit was on DOS. It was pretty novel for the time. It was the first game that, you know, had that really sort of fast-paced gameplay and smooth scrolling, and bright colours you did expect from a console game. Unfortunately, I find the first, Jack Ra first Jazz Jackrabbit borderline unplayable. It has a lot of fans, and maybe it's just that I never took the time to get used to it, but the controls are so touchy, you always move at full speed, there's no momentum, like in this game, where, you know, you actually can, you know, move a little bit slower, and you just run into everything because your field of view is so bad and you can't see ahead of you. There is, however, a port called Open Jazz, and it has plenty of its own technical issues. Like, for example, I can't seem to get saving to work on it, and if you play on high resolutions, it lags the hell out. But I personally think that's the best way to play Jazz 1. It is, just makes it so much better by having high resolution so you can see where everything is. Controls are still a bit touchy, but, you know, it's alright. So, I personally think that Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 
it is one of the greatest video game sequels of all time because it is a sequel to a game that I didn't enjoy at all and it turned into something I absolutely loved. And it does that through tight controls. This game actually controls very well and as I said before, if you move at full speed it's pretty easy to run into stuff but that's sort of like... It's more for speedrunning and racing. Like, I remember that, once again, I played this at school with um, a bunch of friends. And if you were a racer, you'd be like, you know, holding out the shift key all the time. But when you're playing through levels for the first time, you're probably going to be walking through most of them. So, I think that I like the addition of the run button. Like, I remember when Sonic Lost World introduced the run button, people were like, it really doesn't need it. I think that a run button could have helped, honestly, in some of the earlier um, Mega Drive Sonic games and such. But this is definitely a very different game to Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, like, with springs and the speed and everything, it's easy to make comparisons. Some might also say there's a little bit of Earthworm Jim in there with his personality and humor. But it has much more of a focus on precision platforming, and that really killed the first Jazz Jericho bit, because as I said, the controls are really touchy and it just wasn't suited for it. But this one... Wow, I'm doing bad. This one, the controls are more fine-tuned, and I feel it works a lot better. You have multiple weapons you get throughout the game. For example, there's this bouncy thing. These are useless, I never use them. Usually I only use them when I don't realize I'm using, already using them. And I fired them just below an enemy that I was trying to hit and they hit me just as it happened with this guy earlier. Ow. Okay, there was no excuse for that one. So, what I've said so far has been pretty positive overall and I do think this is a good game. And this isn't like one of the really standout tracks, but it's still pretty good. Um, you'll hear the music is fantastic. This, I would consider this one of the best video game soundtracks from Mage. Later on, it gets freaking incredible. And this is already a decent track, but it's more atmospheric as opposed to the later ones, which can get pretty rocking. So the biggest issue I have with Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 is two major things. One, it's kind of glitchy. You'll see a lot of weird things happen with collision detection later on, like you'll see me standing on invisible walls and such. You'll see that like sometimes I will land on the platform then bounce off it awkwardly before landing on it solidly. Wonky stuff like that. That can be really annoying. And the other thing, it's just too short. Like the first chance Jack Rabbit, for all of its faults, I'll give it this. It is a huge game. There's like 70 levels in that. Here you've got four episodes, each with six levels. Whereas in Jazz Jackrabbit, you had like nine episodes of four, with um, six levels each and a boss stage, I'm pretty sure. So that was a pretty big game, and this one just doesn't compare. And I wish it was a little bit longer, because this game is over in like... I would say... Actually, I'm going to go back for a second, because I know I missed a secret. This game's over in about... I'd say... Three hours, at the most... But that makes it good for Let's Plays because this is going to be quick and I can have enough to talk about through this runtime without co-hosts. So that works. And there isn't that much replay value either, apart from one thing that I'm going to show you right now. Okay, these are the bonus rooms. You collect the um, silver coins and gold coins throughout the level. Um, gold coins are worth five, silver coins are worth one. And near the end of each level you'll find this guy and you can pay him coins to enter a bonus stage. Well, not even really a bonus stage, it's just like a little room with um, secret power-ups and such. So this one gives us uh, Hip-Hop, our parrot friend, who will shoot enemies for us until we take one hit. So if you wanted to go through and try and get enough coins in each level to find the bonus rooms, and they usually have like little secret messages left by the developers, that's something to do. It's also like, despite that, you don't actually need every single coin in the level to actually get to the bonus stage. So there isn't much of an incentive to actually find anything. There's no like 100% completion kind of thing. The first chance track but if you found all the secrets on the level, it would show how many you'd found by the end, sort of in a first person shooter kind of way. You don't get that here. And as I said, all do these difficulty levels. It's pretty easy on hard mode anyway, so yeah. But overall, I do think this is pretty good. Some of the levels later on get really imaginative. Uh, I've got another mechanic here. You'll see it, um, these blocks have the ammo type on here. These are the bouncing ball ones that I hate. So only that weapon type will be able to break that wall. Oh yeah, I suppose I should also go over the story. 
since <laughs> welcome to early video game. You don't get an opening cutscene. And another rather cute um idea. Um okay. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a secret, but I wanted to get this first. Anyway, in a rather cute fashion, in the manual, the story is told for cutscene. I mean not cutscene, um comic. <laughs> So, that's quite a cute little idea, I think, to have, just, you know, add some personality to this game. I believe if I... Oh, <laughs> you wanted to look like Sonic the Hedgehog? Here we go. It's not Sonic the Hedgehog, but you bounce back and forth on two springs, just endlessly. Anyway, the comic details that it takes place after the first Jazz Jack Rabbit, which involved you rescuing Eva Earlong, the princess from the Turtle Devon Shell. So, the whole idea of the game is that it's meant to be, like, tortoise in here, but in the future with guns. So, you save her, you're about to be wedged to her, you get her this giant crystal ring, but then Devin Shell steals it, and he's going to use that to travel through time and rewrite history. And after that, the Queen is so disappointed in you, and how terrible you are at actually finishing your business, that being killing Devin Shell in the first game, that he's... She sends you to the dungeon to not, you know, take care of Devon's outbreak and, you know, hopefully save the world. And refuse to let you marry her princess anymore. So, that's lovely. So, then Spaz Jackrabbit, ordered by Eva Earlong, comes to break us out. And this is where we are right now. We are currently escaping the dungeons that the Queen threw us into. And after that, we're going to go stop Devon. This level was the first one that has a lot of branch and paths, which is quite nice. Once again, it adds the replay value, but there's really no incentive for actually going off to being in paths, so, yeah. Oh, Sugar Rush. Okay, this is fun. But this is really the only time that you can really let loose and just go super fast without having to worry about um, taking damage since you're invincible. This happens if you eat enough fruit and other food items. So, it gives your incentive to actually, like, get all the power-ups and stuff. Even though it's just for score, you do get this invincibility boost. Although, really annoyingly, it gets rid of it if you ever... No, oh, bad spree spawned it. It gets rid of it if you enter a boss fight. So, if you're thinking, Oh man, I can't wait to go into this boss fight and wreck this boss. Well, too bad. The music's still going to be playing, but you're not invincible anymore. So, that's going to throw you off. Anyway, now that I'm not invincible, let's use this. And I missed the music. Let's see here. Yeah, this is where you realize that this is just a developer being dicks to each other in these special rooms. That's what I kind of like about it, honestly. This is a very sort of 90s PC game kind of thing. There's some amazing stuff in the first Jazz Jack Rabbit, actually. If you, like, look at the level maps, you'll see that people are just, like, ridden and, te like, heavy swearing in level blocks outside of the level where you normally wouldn't see it, but if you open the level files, you can totally see it. Um, if any of you guys have heard of the Cutting Room Floor, it's a website that's dedicated to basically finding all the cutout content or hidden stuff left by developers in video games. That is a page on Jazz Record 1 and 2, which is where I found out about that. And I think that's pretty great. Uh, okay. If I get that, that's a power-up that will grant me flight, so... This can be used to find the secrets as well. But you don't get this power-up very often, actually. I think it happens, like, three times at the most. And we're about to fight our first boss as well, actually. Also, since I'm flying, I... Oh, wait, no, I can. Lanch, okay. I was about to say, I don't think I could break that block below me. Okay, first boss. This, I quite frankly think, is one of the funniest things in this entire game. Not even this, like, laugh out loud funny, but this is so weird. The first boss in the game is your future mother-in-law. Like... Surely Jazz has been working so hard to impress this chick and just, you know, say, Hey, I am a worthy husband to your daughter. And, you know, he has been trying. That's like, you know, what's been going on in the comic. Suddenly he's not considered worthy anymore. So what does he do? Um, yeah, shoot the hell out of her. Who cares? What even? It, it, was this intentional? I honestly can't tell. That just makes it weirder and funnier to me. So th this is the funniest thing in the game. And that's great. Whatever this is, I support it wholeheartedly. 
As you can see, I'm not doing great, but the great thing about this fight is that you get enough health that you don't really have to do great. That's sort of like the... Yoshi's Island boss, where you have to push the bow in the base off the edge. And if you've already gave it by the just finished it. Okay. <laughs> so, now we're free. And now we get the first weapon that I actually like. Flamethrower. Wait. Flamethrower. There we go. Short range, but continuous fire. Really good against um, bug enemies. I'm pretty sure that the bug enemies are actually drawn to the light like moths. So, that also makes it great because the bugs move very erratically. Also, you know I get in Rayman flashback with these swinging plum platforms? Alrighty, tomatoes. Hard to say. It was definitely plums and Rayman. I could sequence break that if I played as Baz, but Jazz can't jump high enough. So that's the other nice thing about this game. You know, I keep saying it doesn't have replay value, but there is definitely little moments of it. And one of the big ones is that, you know, there's places that only Jazz or Spaz can access in each level. So that's nice. Also, the best thing about this game, there's a character named Spaz Jackrabbit, that's amazing! If you knock that one down before you go over that plum platform, you'll be able to, you know, bypass the plum platform, but you'll miss out on the one up, so that's what I did there. Oh yeah, there's also sort of like environmental puzzles with the weapons, so you can mount ice using the flamethrower. And like, even the, um, you've got ice as well that you can use. And that can be used to freeze things again, so sometimes that even comes into play. So that's interesting. Generally, if there's like dotted boxes like this, that means that some ideas are still crap you can break to make them appear. Like this one, perhaps. Yep. For the structure of this LP, I'm thinking I'm going to do um, two zones per part. This is very much the Sonic the Hedgehog formula, where you have two levels in the same area, and then possibly a boss, or possibly not. It's kind of inconsistent as to where it is. From what I've gathered, the first episode has the bosses at the end of every zone, and then it does kind of forget about it until the last ch episode, so that's bizarre. This game did have a lot of cut content, actually. And once again, look at on the cutting room floor, show some interesting things of, you know, bosses that were originally cut. And you can still find them in the game and fight some of them. Others aren't fightable because they're not finished enough, but others are playable. From what I've gathered, a big issue with the bosses and why some of them were cut was because they were just too hard. But, as well as that, this game was also planned to be updated continuously after it was released. It's sort of thing like Worms Armageddon. How that game came out in like 1997, I think? And can to get updated like into the 2000s? You know, this, this was going to be like that, but it wasn't. It was just kind of forgotten. Except for we're at this one school where everyone thought it was the greatest thing ever. The computer that had two games. We had Jazz, Jackrabbit 2, and Happy Land Adventures, and guess which one was a better game? Happy Land Adventures at least made more sense because that was a freeware game. But Jazz, Jackrabbit, where did this come from? <laughs> did someone buy it? Was it pirated? I mean, surely it was pirated if it was copied onto every single computer there, so I don't know. That is Dodger. I'm sure, like, everyone sort of has, like, those weird stories of games on computers back then, from when you were younger, at school. They're like, you don't know how they got there because they weren't educational, but you played them all the same. I I'm sure, like, anyone that had Mac computers at their school surely has plenty of fond hours of irritating their teachers by playing Nanosaur and bugged them constantly. I absolutely adored those games when I was younger. Nowadays, they're not so great at all. <laughs> And I went in a big circle, didn't I? Someone else might I'll pay on myself at one time. I think it would be kind of fun. Um, by the same people that did um, bug them in Nanosaur. These are all the packing games that were built into old Mac computers back in the day. There was this game called Automatic. And once again, it's not a good game. But 
<laughs> it is fascinatingly bizarre and strange. It's got a lot of imagination to it. Like, nearly every single level has to do something different, and some it's really fun. It's got a whole sort of... It's based on, like, really cheesy 60s sci-fi movies. And quite notably, at one point, you, like, go into this um, jungle where there's giant mantises. And you have to drink magic potions to make you grow in size so you can fight them in Godzilla-style battles. That was so cool! <laughs> and it's like, there's another level that takes place on this clown planet. And I didn't get enough bonus points, oh well. <laughs> yeah, there's one that takes place on a clown planet. And you have to basically do bumper car battles with evil alien clowns. Like, it's a dumb game! <laughs> that I admire what they were going for. I can say that, like, out of all of those weird PC games that you play when you're younger, that, you know, you just play because that's all you have and you don't have a console yet. Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 was good. The other really standout one was Lemmings. Which doesn't really need much of an introduction. I'd also say, um... There was this pinball game we had on my computer at home, Crystal Calibur and Pinball. That was a pretty decent pinball sim. But I feel like Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 out of all of those, is the one that's most likely to still hold up to this day and be appreciated. Even if there are issues that I mentioned before. And I can't reach that grade. Can I? No, I need to be Jazz for that. We're not Jazz Bath. Wait, I can just use this guy's... Um, no, I can't use his hover pack. I destroyed that grade. Enemies don't respawn in this game, which is usually great, but that time it was annoying. This game has a pretty big community though, which is really nice to see, you know. Sometimes games just get completely forgotten, and this game has been forgotten by its developers for sure. You wanna know who made this game? Freaking epic! The guys that make Unreal Tournament, Gears of War? Yeah, th this is back in the days when I made Green Buddy with a bandana and gun game. Th this was their big classic back then. And it's so weird to see <laughs> where they've gone recently. I'm pretty sure, like, at one point, like, this was Cliff Belinsky's big pet project. He mentioned that he wants to go back and actually make another Jazz Jack Rabbit game. Because, like, it constantly always seemed like it was trying to break through and become this really big thing, but it just never quite did. The first Jazz Jack Rabbit was apparently pretty popular as shareware, but very few people actually bought it. They just played the first episode over and over again. And Jazz 2, I'm guessing, is more successful since I can actually find copies of it online. Whereas Jazz 1 is just gone. You can't find it anywhere. <laughs> then there was going to be a 3D game called Jazz Jack Rabbit 3D. Very original, but you know, it was early 2000s to get away with it. <laughs> and then there was, like, that one was going to be <laughs> released. And they even leaked the beta of it online, but it was cancelled. I actually would really like to see where that would go. go. I haven't played it myself, I couldn't get it to run. It's an old game, so, you know, sometimes that's hit and miss, especially when it's a beta. But what a scene, it actually looks kind of intriguing. And apparently gonna be going for a whole, um, Metroidvania kind of thing, where all the levels were interconnected, and there wasn't, like, you know, specifically level goals like there are here. I thought that, and the first thing I thought of was Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. So, I think that could be interesting. Like, I always liked Soul Reaver's, um, whole layout. It could be a bit confusing, but it did feel quite nice and open. I could probably high jump up there. Or I could just try and get to Hovercraft this time without destroying it. Oh, um, great. Wait, one more chance. I, I can do this. Great. Maybe you need to use the... Flamethrower? No. I heard it earlier, I could do it really effortlessly, and now it's just not happening. There was one more Jazz Jack Rabbit game worth noting, and that was a Game Boy Advance reboot. Um, I haven't played it. Everyone says it's bad. I don't know if it is bad, I mean it looks pretty bad, but I haven't played it, so I don't want to judge too harshly. They redesigned Jazz Jack Rabbit, um, I mean in this I'm pretty sure that they said that the inspiration for Jazz's design of this was Rambo, so that's why you have the whole bandana thing. Oh, this boss is pathetically predictable. And I just get hit by him right on me. 
the weird thing about the first chapter is that you go through the game and the bosses just seem to get easier and easier with each level. So we're going to get easier than this. This guy you can just jump over repeatedly. Anyway, Jazz Jack Rabbit Advance seemed to be more slow paced. He sort of had a Han Solo look to him. It didn't really sort of have that thick black outline kind of style that this has that I think looks really good. It looks more... It's sort of bordering on that sort of Donkey Kong Country level, but not quite. I don't think it was the whole CG kind of thing. But it had that kind of aesthetic to it. It didn't have any hard outlines. Things were shaded more carefully. And the game looks a lot slower. And also the camera is more zoomed in, like it was in Jazz 1, which already just makes me think, uh, maybe don't do that. Uh, what the hell, let's keep going. I thought I was only going to do for like four levels, but I'll keep going. So, I mean, it might be an alright game, I don't know, I haven't played it. <laughs> the the fan reaction seems to be just to forget it existed. I mentioned before that um, Jazz 2 still has a bit of a follow to this day. Um, there's a site called Jazz 2 Online. It's not super popular now, but they still do occasional tournaments there yeah, where they all play online. This game does have online as well. And there's a bunch of custom made levels there as well, some which I do want to try sometime. There was one there where, like, basically a guy made an entire campaign. It was like five episodes long. They all had a bunch of levels, had story going with it and everything. Which is pretty admirable. I played a little bit of it, and the level design didn't really do much for me. It seemed to be a little bit cheap at sometimes. But, I can admire the scope there, and if I give them more time, it might warm up to me. There's also one other detail I should mention, <laughs> just for fun, about why I decided to LP Jazz 2. When I was very, very young, I downloaded a copy of this. Yeah, half of it And I thought, hey, I really like Chucker Conroy. He does some pretty cool stuff. Maybe I could do my own LP. I'll LP Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. I mean, that game was fun, right? And it's a computer game, so I can record it without buying a capture card. It was so dumb. <laughs> Never let, like, a 12-year-old LP video games. I'm sure it's probably, like, some really good... 12 year old LP out there to take the fence to that. If you can do it well at 12 years old, freaking kudos. But yeah, it was bad and no one saw it, so that's okay. And it basically just involved me stuttering, stuttering, stut. Nothing's changed. <laughs> it involved me stuttering a lot and lots of awkward silences where I just said nothing and so forth. And I was like, you know what? It would honestly be kind of fun to do jazz again, but <laughs> make it actually decent. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do a decent, decent Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 RP. Because you know what? The game kind of deserves better. This lab area um, is one of the levels that it's um, the assets are used in the shareware demo. It is actually kind of neat, I think, that Shareware Demo has entirely original levels. Because, like, you know when, like, you usually play for a demo, and you're like, wow, that's great, and then you get the game, and you have to play for that opening scene again? That's kind of lame. So, I'm glad that I didn't do that here. Especially since, unlike things like Doom or Duke Nukem, where you can select any chapter at any time, and this, you actually have to beat the previous episode before the other ones get unlocked. So, yeah, if... They did make it just so, you know, you play the first few levels of the full game. Then you would have to replay that stuff. You've already play, probably played a million times if you're a child in the 90s with very few games and a couple of demos. One of which being Jazz Jack Rabbit 2, which is really fun. I'm sure I like everyone remembers. Like, anyone that, like, played PC games? Or, in my case, because I'm hipster trash Mac games. Anyone who played just, like, any kind of computer games when they were younger and found it internet for the first time, they will doubt, undoubtedly remember just downloading a bunch of demos and playing them over and over again because you couldn't afford new video games and you very rarely got them. 
I downloaded so many demos and played all of them repeatedly, I think, and then I bought like three sheer rare games when I was younger. I'm pretty sure like two of them were breakout clones. Mind you, I think the Jazz Tracker 2 was a retail release, actually. Jazz 1 was definitely sheer rare. So I'm pretty sure it was just, yeah, a demo. Shearware in like this style was definitely more of a mid to early 90s thing, whereas this was 1998, I'm pretty sure. So I think we're kind of moving on by that point. But I don't know, I kind of like the whole Shearware business model, honestly. I mean, it makes sense why they don't do it anymore, because as I mentioned, like so many kids would just play Shearware over and over again without actually getting the full game, and I'm pretty sure that's why Jazz won wasn't a huge commercial hit, but was still popular enough to get a sequel, obviously. But there is something neat about the whole idea that, you know, you're basically playing the full game for free, and you can just unlock the extra stuff by getting the full version. And they were generous back then as well. Like, Duke Nukem 3D, you get a whole third of that game. I never really did sort of like grow up with the DOS era. Um, I mean, I'm pretty young. I'm 19 right now, so DOS was kind of before my time. And besides that, I was also um, a Mac user. My family has always used Macs, so anytime I played something, it was always like, as I mentioned, bugged them or automatic or lemmings. Or, like, occasionally a PopCap game. Because they're a thing back then as well. <laughs> I definitely do remember that, like, because my dad was a big Mac geek and tech guy. Like, every now and then, just, like, from, like, getting new Mac hardware and subscriptions and stuff, he'd get, like, random free games. It was always pretty exciting. And like, sometimes it was just kind of meh, but other times it was fun. Jazz Jack River 2 was a Mac game as well, I liked. It was on Mac OS 9. But like, that version is even harder to find in this version, and this version isn't easy to find either. Some people, like, it's still common enough you can get it for a decent price, but like, some people will be like, um, no, yeah, Jazz Jack River 2, it's a classic, um, $70, please. And, uh, I don't have to much for a game that's short. This game really needs to be on, um, GOG.com. Because they've got Epic there. They have all the Unreal games. They've got, um, Tyrion 2000. Which, to be fair, is already freeware, but still. So, if they've got the guys there, why not release Jazz Jackrabbit? Like, everyone's demanding both games, pretty much. So, yeah. Get on that. Release the game. Make money. Then maybe you can get the attention and recognition for a good game that this is. And then maybe we can get JJ Rabbit free and maybe it will be good. Maybe. I would like to see another Jazz Jack Rabbit. But like, I can kind of also see that it's a bit of a product of time. And that, you know, it's a whole mythical of attitude kind of thing. But at the same time, I think that it would do pretty well with a downloadable game because there's so many retro throwbacks back there. I mean, platformers have kind of had a resurgence in download games. And you've got things like Mighty Number no. 9 and um, Ukulele coming up. I am so excited for Ukulele, by the way. I'm a huge Magic Zoe fan. So maybe another you know, Jazz could work. I guess they like WayForward possibly doing a good job with this. For a sequel, I'd like it to, uh, well, obviously, be a lot longer. I'd also prefer some more um, incentives for exploration. Like, you can do it and you'll get rewards, but ammo and lives are plentiful enough. That, like, I mean, look, I've already got 11 lives and we're barely started. You know, it's the items are plentiful enough that you don't really need the secret area, so there's not much of a reason to go for them. But that's coming from someone who, like, you know, if you ask me what my favorite platform was, I'd say things like Banjo-Kazooie, 
the Wario Land games, Yoshi's Island, all those things have a huge emphasis on exploration, finding secrets, 100% completion, and all that. But like, even if you didn't have all of that stuff, if the game was as long as the first Jet Strike Rabbit, you could probably get away with not having too much replay value. Third, just keep the controls tight, keep the level design pretty good. I think this game has pretty decent level design. There's some later levels that kind of aren't great, but for uh, right now, it's doing pretty good. Um, aren't there supposed to be platforms here? Good level design. <laughs> That's always the best when you're like, oh man, this thing's good. Oh wait, I'm lost. Oh right, hoverboards. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is like another mechanic where this only happens once. I can't remember another single area in this game where you get the hoverboard. I can't wait to be proven wrong on this. Part of me honestly kind of feels like this is a bit of a pointless mechanic because you've already got um, both the carol that you fly and the helicopters which you can get from enemies. Oh frick. Worth not paying attention there. These little um, red bubble enemies are such a pain because when they deflate, they're invincible but can still deal damage to you. So you could just think, okay, I'll shoot them and then shoot up while they're falling down. But no, it doesn't work. So never shoot at them when they're directly above you. You can shoot as much as you want. You're not going to kill them before they land and deal damage to you. So we should have the last boss of this chapter coming up soon, which will be the ending point for this part. Like, okay, so this is the first chapter. Oh, this is one of the um, power-ups in this. They come in like monitors like Sonic the Hedgehog, but what this one does is it helps you with the other character for a short period of time, so... It doesn't mean that much, but you know, you might find some secrets that you can only get with that character. I can show off Jazz's abilities here. I mean, not Jazz's, Spaz's abilities here. Oh, I had enough with a um, bonus. Okay, so Jazz has been Spaz. Spaz Jack Rabbit has the Karate Kick. And he's got the Double Jump. Wait, Double Jump. There we go. <laughs> Those are his three big things. Oh. <laughs> Screw you too, game! <laughs> So yeah, when we're already this far for, you know, we're almost um, 25% through this game. You can see what I mean when I said the game is just too short. And like, yeah, I mean, it doesn't wear out its welcome. And it's another game that has a huge amount of ideas. And I still think it could have been a bit bigger. And there's another variety in these levels as well that I would have liked to see more. This first chapter is not the most exciting. But as we'll see in the next part with the second chapter, there's some really cool levels in this game. The next chapter, in fact, actually has my favorite level in this game. Okay, here's the lamest boss in the game. This is so dumb. It just goes back and forth. This is it. This is Devin Shao's amazing masterpiece. What is this? What is this? This was supposed to be, you know, the big climactic battle for the end of this chapter. This sucks. Next chapter. Next part. Let's go.